Last week we talked about how God created everything. We learned that God existed before everything. In fact, he's existed forever, and that he created all things from time and space to sun and moon, entire systems of animals and plants, and then his most prized possession, us. We also talked about how everything was made by design, not just by accident, and that God gave specific purposes to his designs. And then normally we would quickly move on to how we sinned and messed all of that up. But we wanted to pause this week and take some time to talk more about God. I mean, how can we really be sure that God really exists? Take this candle. You, you can see the flame, right? Now watch. What happened? You're right, I, I blew it out. Now, did you all see the air coming out of my mouth? No, because it's invisible. You can see the effects of the air on the flame. Sometimes God is a lot like this. We can look around and we can see the effects that God has had on the world. But we don't actually see him. Isaiah 42, five says, thus says the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk in it. There's so much in our world that simply wouldn't work. God hadn't designed it that way. This morning, I'm gonna ask you to grab your field notes, and we're gonna take some time talking about the ways that we can be sure that God exists. First of all, Hebrews 3, 4 says, for every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. This is the way that we know God exists, the universe and the earth, because God is the builder of everything. Did you know that the gases that make up our air allow us to breathe in oxygen and put out carbon dioxide? Plants and trees then take that carbon dioxide and convert it into more oxygen that fills the right amount of air so you and I can breathe. What a complex system that was created, not by accident or by random events, by a designer. Only a divine designer could create such a complex universe. Did you know that the human eye is made up of two million parts and can distinguish between seven million colors? Did you know that our brains process over a million messages every second? Did you know that our body has genes? Not those kind of genes little markers in our cells that tell our body if we will have blue eyes or blonde hair or, or, or dark skin or, or tons of other things. Only a divine designer could create such a complex being. Psalm 139, 13 and 14 says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Did you hear that? Long before you were born, while you were still in your mother's belly, God was putting you together. God cared so much for you and for me that he would take time to make sure we were exactly how he wanted us to be. This is our second way of knowing that God exists, the human body. The final way we can know that God exists is through moral laws. I know that's a word you don't hear very often, but here's basically what it means. When I was a kid, my sister got to go on a special trip with my grandmother. And guess who was left at home, all alone, with my boring parents? Me. I remember saying, It's not fair! For most of us, we don't like it when things aren't fair. Moral laws are the ways that we look at what happens in the world and say if it's right or if it's wrong. But where would these laws come from? You see, there's something inside of us that points to a divine designer who is fair. And all these truths point us to help us to know that God exists and that he wants to be known by us. But this isn't the only way that we can know God. What makes God so amazing is that the God who created everything so complex wants to be known by you. 
the Bible tells us about God. Remember Genesis 1.1, it says, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Even though we can look around and see this world that God has created, he tells us even more about him in our Bibles. Romans 1.20 says that his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. It says that God has been clearly seen in the things that he has made. So we can know God through nature. But 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So we can know God by the world that he's created and we can know God by how he, what he tells us in the Bible. This week I asked you guys to tell me your favorite books and why. Here's your answers. Hi, my name's Ethan and my favorite book is Clarence Kingham. And why? Because they're funny and you know? all. Bye. Hi, my name is Caleb. And my favorite book is The Silver Trail. Hi, my name is Cindy, and my favorite book is Whatever After Genie in a Bottle. I like it because it's about a brother and a sister going into different fairy tales. Bye. My name is Nolan, and my favorite book is Dogman and Cat Kid. That's awesome. I love books because they tell us these crazy stories of made up places, made up lands, and things that we've never experienced before. But the Bible is very different because it doesn't just give us information about who God is or what God has done. But when we read the Bible, when we spend time with God, we actually get to know God. If you hear nothing else today, hear this. God wants you to know him and he wants to get to know you. That is why you were created. Take some time this week and think about it this great God, and how you can know him more through his nature and through his word.